are you a medical student and don't know how to read ECG don't worry because in the next five minutes we are going to master ECG so are you ready friends if you are new to our channel we upload animated videos in regular basis to make your learning easy so subscribe our channel and if you like this video please like it and share it Before understanding ECG, we should know ECG paper moves at the speed of 25 mm per second and one small square is equal to 0.04 second and one large square is equal to 0.2 second. When a strip of ECG come to our hand, we should check is it valid or not at first. For validity, we look at AVR lead. AVR gives mirror image of normal waveform that is inverted p wave is expected in avr lead if p wave is not inverted in lead avr it means either lead placement is reversed or patient has dextrocardia so we should send patient for next ecg if p wave is not inverted in lead avr secondly we see p wave P wave is due to atrial depolarization. Normally, P wave is about two and a half small square in height and width. That is, 2.5 into 0.04 is equal to 0.1 second. We observe P wave in lead second. If P wave is present, then it is simply a sinus rhythm. Presence of P wave indicates the rhythm is sinus in origin. And if P wave is absent, it can be due to atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, P wave is replaced by fibrillatory wave. P wave can be absent in case of nodal rhythm or in case of idioventricular rhythm. Secondly, we observe the morphology of P wave. First half of the P wave represents right atrial depolarization and second half represents left atrial depolarization. In right atrial enlargement, peaked P wave is expected. Especially in case of core pulmonal, peaked P wave can be seen. In left atrial enlargement, initial half is normal, but second half is enlarged. And we observe AMSEPT P wave. AMSEPT P wave is seen in case of mitral stenosis and it is due to left atrial enlargement. Thirdly, we check the rate of heart. For heart rate calculation, we first check whether the rhythm, rhythm is regular or irregular. In regular rhythm, heart rate, heart rate is calculated by simple formula 300 divided by a number of large square in between R and R, or 1500 divided by number of the small square between two R waves. If rhythm is irregular, heart rate is calculated by another formula and it is number of the R interval in between two tick marks in rhythm strip which is multiplied by 10 to the required heart rate. If the heart rate is less than 60, we call it bradycardia and if, if the heart rate is more than 100, we call it tachycardia. Fourth point, heart rhythm. In sinus rhythm, P wave is followed by QRS complex, that is, P wave is to QRS complex ratio is 1 is to 1. Heart rhythm can be regularly irregular, that is, P wave followed by QRS complex is seen in case of regularly irregular heart rate, heartbeat. Regularly irregular heartbeat is seen in case of sinus arrhythmia, or it can be irregularly irregular. Irregularly irregular is seen in case of atrial fibrillations and ventricular arrhythmias. In case of atrial flutter, P wave is to QRX complex ratio is usually 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1 or 4 is to 1 and we observe short tooth appearance of P wave. If, if the P wave is to QRX complex ratio is 1, it is due to sinus, it is the sinus rhythm. In case of atrial fibrillation, there is no P wave and P wave is replaced by fibrillatory wave. P 
is to qx complex ratio is not applicable in case of atrial fibrillation because we cannot distinguish p wave in case of atrial fibrillation fifth point pr segment and pr interval first we should know in case of ecg segment means a straight line that is isoelectric line remember segment yes for segment and yes for a straight line now p wave is 2.5 small square and pr segment is also 2.5 small square as we know pr interval is the sum of p wave and pr segment so pr interval duration is 5 small square which is equal to 0 0.2 second pr interval is shortened in case of wolf parkinson white syndrome in wolf parkinson white syndrome there is an accessory pathway that connects atrium and ventricle as we know pr segment represents av nodal depolarization and normally there is a delay of 0 0.1 second in av node if depolarization is moving directly from atrium to ventricles without av node that is by, by bypassing av node pr interval will be shortened it is less than 0 0.1 second in case of wolf parkinson white syndrome and we observe delta wave in ecg pr interval can be prolonged that is 0 0.2 second case of av block and there are three different types of the heart block the in first in first degree heart block pr interval is regularly prolonged it means PR interval is prolonged, it is more 0 0.2 but it is same in case of all the issues. In second degree heart block, in Mobis 1, PR interval increases, increases and increases until the P wave is not followed by QRS complex. That is in Mobis 1, PR interval increases until there is absent QRS complex. In Mobis 2, PR interval is normal in some cases, in some issues but some p wave is not followed by qrs complex it means pr int pr interval may be normal in some place but somewhere else p wave is not followed by qrs complex but in case of third degree heart block there is complete dissociation between p wave and qrs complex another thing is we should observe q waves q wave is called pathological when it is more than two small square dip so it indicates pathological q wave indicates current mi or past mi another is qrs complex qrs complex represents ventricular depolarization and it is it is also two and a half small square in width so it is 0 0.1 second in duration we observe amplitude and durations of the qrs complex in ecg qrx complex if it is more than 0 0.1 second, it can be due to ventricular ectopics or ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. QRX com widened QR complex is seen in case of ventricular arrhythmia. It can be due to ventricular ectopics or ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. QRX complex is also widened in case of bundle branch block. In right bundle branch block, there is M pattern QRS complex in lead V1 and W pattern QRS complex in lead V6. But it is opposite in case of left bundle branch block. We observe W pattern in lead V1 and M pattern in lead V6. Next is QT, QT interval. QT interval is from the start of Q wave to the end of T wave. It is prolonged in case of torsadi de pointe next is st segment st segment elevation is seen in case of acute mi or pericarditis if st segment is elevated in lead v1 and v2 it is due to septal mi if it is seen in case of v3 and v4 it is due to anterior wall mi or if it is seen in case of lead 1 avl v5 and v6 it is due to lateral wall mi but if it is in lead second third and av of it is due to inferior wall mi as the segment depression is seen in case of 
non ST segment elevation MI and posterior MI. Another is T wave. Upright T wave is usually upright in all lids, but it is inverted, it is not upright in case of AVR and B1. Tall and peaked T wave is seen in case of hyperkalemia, but broad asymmetric T wave is seen in case of early STEMI, that is ST segment elevation MI. We also see broad and asymmetrical T waves. Inverted T waves indicates MI or hyperkalemia. Inverted T wave is also seen in case of pericarditis. So, friends, uh, this much for ECG. Hope this video is informative to you. If you like this video, please like it and don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.